a formal good afternoon and thank you uh, ospas and business one for organizing this session this is really something uh, need of the hour and i'm i'm very glad we have the best brains and visionaries on the stage to provide comments on this and one why i say this this is a very important one because if you really look india as a country uh, i do not know how many of you are aware that in the disaster index india is ranked second only behind philippines more than 75% of the country is risk prone through disaster natural disasters uh, well now nexel coming down uh, but till some time back we had around 90 districts nexel infested if you look at business continuity kind of protests we have the kind of without warning incidents we have they they are just too many to handle and often they also lead to a violence rather than only being a plain simple normal protest that means the business business disruptions are high well thanks to good neighbors the problems which we had at borders facing guns and bombs also reached our doorsteps at houses and and offices so if you really look at from a security professional this is the best training ground you can get you have every possible thing happening in the world in front of you and yes but what's available for training or learning is on the job training itself we have not been able to develop much of formal curriculums for security business continuity otherwise we still heavily rely upon us standard certifications why because we've not developed anything of our own as yet so formal education less certifications less there's a form of learning and development there's a transfer sharing all that at least have started happening in these conferences but the formal ways are still very less and we need to have it after you have done the basic curriculums a lot of people do a lateral movement so is there something we are able to offer them that okay for a leadership security leadership what we can get again the answer is no a dismal no in fact so with all that kind of a situation when you have maximum risk but we not done enough i think it's time that such sessions are also conducted and actions are taken that finally we have a curriculum for start we have program for mill management and we really have thought process for the leadership to take it forward and 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 great leaders here maybe if i request uh, major garewal to start with who has done huge amount of safety security and even leadership trainings and has been making a very effective contribution in learning management so that the overall environment changes believe me once you have the right learning and training going on the impact is on full environment not only on you as an individual or you as an organization so that's the change we need to look for so over to you sir for comments thanks gary okay thank you gary uh happy to be here and uh, the topic which he spoken about is actually very close to my heart uh i run a security company for over two decades i run a training vertical which is completely uh an independent thing for uh, safety and risk management we are still learning every day and i would not uh i would fail if i do not say that training or investment in training has really emerged as a key driver of change and quality now that is something we all look for whichever organization we belong to whatever businesses we are we want change we want to embrace change and we want to up the quality there is no better way than training when i say training i include learning development occupational skills behavioral skills soft skills anything you want now if you take security personnel that we are talking about today the start was pasara regulation now pasara regulation was the base level and all my friends from the industry will will know that there is no behavioral and soft skill topic in pasara it has only occupational you know you know the military ranks and you know this and you know that and some of the security personnel when i say security personnel i am not talking ladies and gentlemen about the guards i am talking about the security guard to the cfo or the cro who is the chief risk officer today one of the biggest challenges they face is related to handling of a situation which is not only soft skills it's not being polite it is their behavioral skills 
which needs to be taught to them in a formal manner and that is why training learning and development in this industry is constantly evolving five days ago or ten days ago was old what you need is tomorrow and that is why please bring it back on the tabletop now having said that the word given to it is refresher training now unfortunately let's call a spade a spade we have a void which connects the need from what we are training now i'll start with the guard you've trained him on certain skills to use for visitor management etc etc but have you actually done a data analysis of incidents which have happened in the two years which he could have handled better had he been skilled in what so what we've got to do is we've got to do philip we've got to turn it around train him on data analysis incident reporting and things which have needed now which takes me to the next point is he alone in a facility he's a first responder he's a first reporter but you have other people you have other service partners you have your own security teams i've had the good fortune about 15 years ago to have a client who tells me he says do me a favor run five training sessions for my team this is the security director of a very big ites company he says because we write policy we tell them to implement it but we don't know it so the training has to be done for everybody and there's nothing wrong with it which brings me to the next thing what is today we cannot work in silos all the esteemed panelists before me have been mentioning this and i've been listening to it with a lot of interest it is all merging whether you called about security you take safety you take risk management it is all keeping out of harm's way somewhere it is hsse health safety security and environment <coughs> health was not there none of our guards were doing things which they did in covid and india has done extremely well in covid i travel around the world we provide services around the world i will say this with a lot of pride that we've done extremely well for a security guard who never worn a ppe he has worn a ppe gone into the most difficult covid environment filled oxygen cylinders and brought it to clients homes and he's learned it so there is a very very urgent need to treat security safety health and environment on the same platform which drives us to greater partnerships <laughs> training has to be unfortunately a client gives you a contract and tells you give me train guys you tell him i have trained them on your so called sla but there becomes a gap you need more cooperation you need no trust you need no honesty you need to know that together is the only way forward and that is where the together way forward the bridge will come through training learning and development we've heard a lot about technology whether it is can be used or not i am unfortunately um a great ardent fan of technology though i'm from a completely non technical background i feel it is not one of the ways forward it is the only way forward when i say technology ladies and gentlemen i don't mean digitization i mean digitalization creating a soft copy or sending a pdf on on a mail or a phone is not what we need to do is digitalize we need to transform we need to reimagine we need to reengineer the way we do business and the way we do training and it can only happen if we come together whether it is a client whether it is the service provider whether it is suppliers the mantra is outsourcing the mantra is specialization 
as we specialize certain uh, IT, certain HR, certain other functions, we have reached a stage where we will also have a client, a supplier, a supplier has another supplier, a supplier has a third supplier. And what will bind them together will be good training, standard procedures, and a training in which it is measurable. What cannot be measured cannot be improved. And it is there, it is available, but we have to be regional tigers. And I'm sure I see the changes. Uh, the time does not permit me, but offline I can tell you in places where we've set it up and it's worked wonders. So I will finish by saying that it is the only way forward. Training with technology and career development will come. Gary, we've mentioned that we have to make this profession attractive. We have to get people and ask them to, getting them is not a problem, keeping them to stay in the profession is the problem. We have a turnover, a churn of over 35 to 34 percent, 40%. Now with all these things happen, which my good friend Manjeet was talking in the morning, with airports opening up, other things opening up, we have to be open to change, bring in more people, bring in better people, offer them career growth. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very relevant. And the way you have comprehensively rounded up, it's, it's, it's great. And yes, uh, I think one of the key points you mentioned about technology and moment I think about technology, if I look at Reka comes from an organization which has got huge amount of technology, R&D, all that type of work going on. And, and also, at the same time, the, the security needs are immense for a, for a sector she works. So, Rekha, if you really look at the world is regularly talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, automation, security is also talking about it. But like Major Garewal said, sometimes we're even struggling on the basics. So are we ready for that? How do we reach that stage? How do we get the AI, ML technology and everything else embodied into training and becomes an effective tool for us? Thanks, Gary. Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> Sorry for the bad shot, but <coughs> so, um, I'll just start from where uh, Major Garewal uh, concluded, in fact, in a few points that he mentioned, um, you know, about what kind of training, right? Um, so most of us, we basically invest a lot of our times, and it, it applies to most of us, I would say, not, if not all of us. Uh, we invest most of our times in investing, providing that, you know, um, we call it um, hard core skill sets. Um, which is almost 85% of, you know, the total. And we missed on maybe that 15%, which basically is how are we going to provide the training to these people, right? So when, you, when we're talking about providing training and ensuring career development for uh, employees in the organization, it just cannot be, you know, uh, one-dimensional. It has to be two-dimensional. So I'll just cover first point first and then I'll touch upon the second thing. Uh, the training that we are, you know, giving to the employees, I was having this conversation in one of the um, events earlier and someone asked me how much is like too much. Uh, we are providing trainings and then we have refresher trainings and then, you know, periodic trainings and all that stuff. And I asked a counter question that uh, if, you know, you, you bathe daily, right? Does that mean that it's gonna take care of rest of your month? No. So it applies to training as well. So if you have undergone some training on, you know, whatever time of the year, it is very important to just go through it all over again. And like I said, what is important is how are you going to really impart that training? It is, is it effective enough? I mean, just look at it, uh, you know, even the dead cells on our body, hair and nails, you know, they also grow, right? So, which basically means that we have that tendency to grow it. What is required is that how, how much we are really putting in. Um, so I'll use something in Hindi and I think we, most of us really understand that. Uh, yeah, let's say any fruit, right? This is saying that, you know, the ripen uh, fruit falls first. Why do we say so? That's because 
Training is a continuous thing. If you think that you've been trained and you know it all, you know everything, there is a tendency that you might fall apart. So keep growing, keep learning, and then also keep imparting those trainings to uh, you know your uh, team members or employees. Now I come to um, the second part of it, wherein the organization, um, whether or not they really pay attention to these trainings, where uh, you know the AI and machine learning thing comes in. Um, we have seen the companies wherein either through uh, you know push system, which is um, inbuilt, uh, you really don't need any individual to really uh, make people sit and you know uh, take the training. But it is uh, through machine, through software, you have programs, um, and employees are undergoing that training. You you just really do not know if they are really paying attention to that module, that deck that we call. So use it, but use it in such a fashion that the content there is really helping person to uh, upskill themselves. But at the same time, there is a monitoring that the person is actually undergoing training. Because training is something which is directly connected to the development of your employees and people. Uh, if they are doing the same thing all over again and there is no you know, uh, value addition to that particular topic, then they're gonna remain where they have been in the beginning. And this is gonna have a ripple effect on not just their development, but also in the organization development. So AI and machine learning probably can be built in to really look for the topics, how we're gonna, you know, uh, make modules. But the imparting trainings and making it more effective will definitely have uh, you know, that human intervention. Where we are lacking and what we are confusing with when we talk about you know, machine learning and how we can just you know, get technology in is that, okay, we have something which is already inbuilt, we really don't need any human intervention. Uh, people can sit in front of the laptop and you know, they just need to click on some roastering thing and training will take care uh, you know, of uh, the employee. It's not going to work for um, you know long. If we are talking about uh, the current age, where um, you know we're talking about upscaling security professionals, gone are the days when we used to just talking about physical security. There's so much into it, and again, how we're going to impart those trainings is something which is um, really make difference. If it is not transformational, then it is not training. So um, that's what I would say. Well, thank you, Rekha. Very, very relevant comments. And, and especially when you said there is so much more than security being done. And there is, uh, if I really look at, uh, and let me take a minute and, and look at an overall perspective of risk management per se, rather than only using the word security, because that's a much larger ambit. And I often take liberty, even in a business forum, to talk about what business leaders and CEOs do. And, and I don't keep this as my copyright. You're happy to use it. I, I always say that business leaders and CEOs only do two functions. First is planning. Second is risk management. Actually, this is what they do. They need to have a careful plan. And once the plan is ready, they need to ensure the plan is successful. Whether they're doing risk management in terms of the market changing and they need to control. HR resource not available. The human resource intake not coming in time and they need to find a solution. Whatever they do is only to uphold the plan remains right. So the risk management is as critical function that it's only the two jobs which a CEO has. And that's where we belong. We take care of at least certain part of risk which our CEO needs to do. But often, this, this gets a little ignored. But why, why I'm saying all this? Because we have the next speaker who has seen many aspects of it. Right from security to facility to ESG in many aspects. So may I request uh, Captain Kolako that this is really a very vast domain and you have seen so many of it. Uh, once we are struggling on base, the expectation going up, how do we get all these things in the training and how do we get all these skills ready to deliver? Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And first of all, thank you, Ospa, for giving us an opportunity to get together. And I'm really delighted to be on the panel. Uh, first things first, you know, Rekha said something on training, which is how much is enough or how much is how much training is really required to be done. First of all, why do you require training? It's a basic question which I'm asking. 
if you do an analysis of why training is really required about 80 to 90 percent of the mistakes that happen is due to lack of training gary spoke on uh, risk mitigation that is another that is another aspect which we really have to look into risk mitigation will be eliminated unless and until you train your people properly it could be anything you know you take a step back uh, we spoke of industrial uh, the csf in the morning Basically, when we started off security, security was basically physical security. Today, look at the domain of security that we are looking at. We're talking of AI, we're talking of machine learning, we're talking of drones, we're talking of cyber attacks. H how do we really protect it? This is all a part of security. It's not that, you know, we are working on different facilities, facility management for that matter. We talk of BIM, that is, uh, and we talk of other aspects. Yesterday, we were speaking to somebody and somebody spoke in the morning of ROI. What is the ROI for training? There is just no ROI. We as professionals, as probably head of an organization, there is no cost that is involved in it. I should be myself taking trainings. The people down below me should start taking trainings. There is no ROI in this. It's a learning, it's a, it's a continuous process. We have, we filled appraisal forms, you know, the HR centers, and you have something known as uh, you behavioral training and soft skill training and why do we really require all these training look at the basic functioning of training training will help you to enhance your career training will help you in your career development today where we are it is not because of anything else it is because of continuous learning continuous training that has happened and in a retrospect we we try to you know analyze where could we have gone wrong where we have gone wrong and what are the corrective steps that we have taken? This is all, whether it is transformational or whether it is operational, these trainings have to happen. We have to assess ourselves and be prepared. Like Indrajit said, you have 10 minutes for a cyber attack. That's but all. Are we really trained for that? Or are we looking at aspects to train ourselves onto those aspects? It's, it's, it is always be the hacker or whoever we are talking of, uh, like Martin was talking of that he used to go to the prisons and you know speak to them and ask them that how would you do your next crime better so we are getting into an aspect where we are trying to ask them you know you have to get into the minds otherwise that guy whether it is physical security or a hacker or whatever it is he is 10 times ahead of we are not talking of a physical war like was shown in the morning you know we won't have an army your army is your probably your boardroom or probably one of the hackers room it's it's a proper business model like in the had said so we need to train ourselves prepare ourselves step by step learn all those and you will have different capsules for each one of them and you'll have different people learning it. probably at a security guard level the training would be much different you would be able to monitor his data as how many incidents have happened or how many probable incidents have happened. You know, it, it's like an HSE policy which we, we generally do. How many missets have happened before a final incident really happens? Because the attacker is continuously going to get into your system, trying to get into your system, whether physically or through your systems. And we need to protect our critical assets. That is why we as professionals are sitting here for. We are being paid for that, that we apply ourselves in such a way that we are able to take probably one, two, three, four, five, six steps. And it's an end-to-end -end sort of a connection which is going to happen always. A security guard probably will have a different level of training. A probably person above him will have a different level of training. In fact, I was uh, about a year back or two years back, in fact, I had gone to a facility and uh, I asked somebody, Give me, what is the training schedule that you have? He says, our builder says that we, we need not have any security training, uh, any training to be there. I said, then you are in for a disaster. And believe you me, six months down the line, they had a fire, nobody was able to handle it. And then he gave me a call and he said, give me what you were saying. Right? I said, training, you need to do a continuous training, take a feedback, refresher courses like uh, Major Garwal had said. These things are very important in, in all the aspects. It is a step-by-step -step training that you need to do that step by step will take you to a different career level that career level will enhance your uh, you know your thought process the way you think the way you uh, approach a problem because we need to 
you know, really diversify into these trading programs, whatever. Now we are talking in event security. We talked of you know using of drones for that matter. Are our people really qualified to you know sort of monitor those things? In event security, you are taking people, uh, you know, who are about 20, 25 years of age for a particular period. I was in Qatar for the World Cup, and the the security that was there. I mean, it was mind-boggling. At every 50 meters or every 100 meters, you would find somebody over there ready to either guide you or to, you know, tell you that you are going right or you are going wrong. So, that is an experience which you, you, it's an enhanced experience that you get. And that is very important. So, unless and until we plan, until and unless we delegate and unless we also do it. So, you have a PDCA for that also. You do plan, do and you, at the end of the day, you do... A, Whatever you do has to be uh, qualified and has to be ratified by data. How many people have really done the training? How many people have really qualified on that? So that's an important aspect that we need to do. We need to push up our people. We need to enhance the career development of people. Thank you, sir. That, that's great. I think all combined together will be able to uh, move much faster. Avina, you've been doing too many trainings Hello. and we love, respect and really regard the new initiatives you take. You've been working as Wes, you've been working as individual trainer. And while we're still talking about base, you have also seen the pulse at what's needed. Because I believe you have a special training program for Posh for Guards, which is still an ignorant subject. Thankfully, you have started thinking about it. So a lot of these new things which you're doing, uh, if you can give us some case study, how it impacts and what's the positive denominations emerging out of there. Thank you, Gary, for such a lovely question. It's, I'm so passionate about it. <laughs> First of all, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, since we're talking about security personnel, I want you to relate human to human. So we are into human selling business. So I will start from there because law and the POSH has very mandatory for all the organization to comply with. That's very mandatory and this is a legal compliance. Ever since 2013, this legislation came into the picture. It says and provides the, and it's normally basically it's a mandate to include and provide the posh training and gender equality training to all the employees also this act says whether you have a female employee or not if you are an enterprising company you should have posh ic committee in place because then you have a contractor and any female contractor or vendor coming into your premises so what it says is you should have a premises then you need this ic committee also, our constitution of law, which is 354 and 509, which narrates the sexual harassment at workplace and is involved and support the workplace addressing these situations and the harassment. 509, if you look at it, it says any word, any gesture, any action of a human to a woman for outraging the modesty and insulting her also compliances under this law. I will tell you some scenarios in Hindi because so that we can relate to the security guard. When you go to any premises, the first point of contact what you say is our security guard. Now it's the organized sector, unorganized sector. Two situations I would like you to relate. Now our guard is a typical question. Suppose a lady walks into a premises. The first question is where are you from? Where do you get to meet? So where do you get to meet? My answer is that you get to meet from home. You know, because we have tuned them asking such question under the SOPs and SLA. We don't tell them beyond that. We don't give them the behavioral training. As I said, we human human. So human, human se defer kab hoga when we will train them mentally how to behave. Second question is, where do you go? And sometimes they are under so much of pressure, they don't know how to behave with a female. Now, other side of the story, we all female, we are educated, we've been empowered under this post training. Now it comes to the perception of a female. Mujhe gussaya, the way you ask, it's a power game. Madam, kaha jana hai? Kis se milna hai? You know, typically these questions. When you enter the first entrance gate, guard post, when you enter to the premises, which is the guard registration counter visitor management system, there also you have been asked to show your ID. The way you say, ID dikhaiye, camera ko yaha laiye. And surprise to your knowledge ki aaj kal naya law aaya hai, societies mein jab hap jate hai, to guards been told ki lady ki picture khichni hai. You can relate this. Kaafi log humare guards ko training dekhte hai. Jab aap andar koi visitor aayega, khas kar lady hoogi, to aap uski camera se picture khiishte hai. Humari jaisi lady or sari ladies oppose karti hai. You can't click my picture. Because I may be dressing in different, I mean, 
इट्स नॉट लीगली अलाउड बट हमने उनको एस ओ पीज दे दिए कि कोई भी रजिस्टर करेगा एज ए विजिटर आपको पिक्चर खींचनी है विदाउट थिंकिंग द विजिटर कैन बी फीमेल सो द पॉज ट्रेनिंग आई वॉन्ट टू गिव यू टू टू थ्री मोर सीनारियोज जब भी हम गार्ड से डील करते हैं गार्ड की तीन सिचुएशन होती हैं जब कोई लेडी पार्किंग करती है किसी भी क्राउडेड प्लेस में आई एम गिविंग यू सम हॉस्पिटल सिनेरियो वेर आई बिन गार्डिंग ट्रेनिंग दिस गार्ड थाउजेंड गार्ड उनका पहला क्वेश्चन होता है कि लेडी गाड़ी वहीं पे पार्क करती है जहाँ पे उनको नहीं करने चाहिए नाउ टेल मी हाउ योर गार्ड विल एड्रेस दिस इधर ही वुड हैव अ पावर मैडम यू नॉट सपोज टू पार्क योर कार ही मे बी ए पोलाइट और ही मे नॉट बी ए पोलाइट बिकॉज ही हैज अ ऑर्डर्स फ्रॉम टॉप मैनेजमेंट कि मैडम आप तो गाड़ी यहाँ पर नहीं लगा सकते देन क्लैशेस ऑफ ईगो दैट बिकम्स ए सेक्शुअल हरासमेंट बिकॉज सेक्शुअल हरासमेंट डज नॉट से वट इज दी थिन लाइन इट्स डज से इज द परसेप्शन ऑफ अ फीमेल हाउ आई प्रसिव द वे यू कैप्ट योर बॉडी पॉस्चर्स जहाँ पर आपने ऐसे हाथ लगाया पॉकेट में हाथ लगाया बॉडी को आपने टच किया दीज थिंग्स आर हिडन रिस्क फॉर ऑल द कॉपरेट्स फॉर मैन इवन आई टेल यू द सी एस ओ एग्जाम्पल आई एव वेरी क्लोज फ्रेंड ऑफ माइंड ही वॉज अंडर दिस सेक्शुअल हरासमेंट complain somebody has filed complaint against him and what was his fault because he had stopped a lady guard and he was a cso of that company he had he had no role to stop that lady guard however you are the operation people you should have stopped wo unko roz power game mein bolta tha eh phone pe baat mat kar the way he said because per perhaps he must have said generally and then the lady has filed the posh complaint against him now what happens when you have a posh complaints aap sab ne dekha hoga life goes for six aapki jo guilty hoti hai na guilty nahi bhi hote to entire society proves you you are in guilty aapne to kiya hi hoga ladki ko to cheda hi hoga it happens ab sare log usko milke accuse declare kar dete even if he is not guilty fir kya hota hai management will ask you to leave the job go here and there till the investigation is on that keeps happening so when we train the guards we counter these small small you know complaints especially the lady guards now you don't have a report mechanism jo aapki security guard lady hai wo kahan pe jayegi report karne agar usko sexually harass kisi ne bhi kiya hai could be walking vendor it could be her colleague could be anything because we don't tell and train them for the reporting mechanism so finally kya hota hai wo employer ke paas jate hain who is your client fir employer aapko bolta hai aapko to posh ki training mandate karni hi padegi do they pay for it no they don't pay for it so posh is not a mandate compliances when it comes to running a security company however is the mandate compliance mandate compliances for a employer which imposes and passes the risk on to you without paying a single penny so i would say collectively i think we as a guarding company or professional we have to tell the client look if you want our guard should train under the posh you have to pay for it free me kuch nahi aata pay peanuts get monkeys ye hamari security ki kahawat hai so पॉश में हमारे जो वैस के केसेस आते हैं ट्रस्ट मी सेवेंटी परसेंट केसेज वी हेयर फ्रॉम द मेन साइड बिहाइंड दी कर्टन कोई सामने नहीं आता एंड राजीव वुड विटनेस वी हैव डन कपल ऑफ यू नो पैनल डिस्कशन एक्यूज कैन बी विक्टम ट्रस्ट मी दिस पॉश इज अ वेरी वेरी रिस्की हिडन रिस्क बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली सॉरी टू से वी आर नॉट रेडी टू एक्सेप्ट कि ये हमारे साथ हो जाता है और होता भी है हम लोग सोशल स्टेगमा में इस चीज को नहीं बोलते हैं बट मेट्स इट डज हैपन पॉश कंप्लेंट्स आर देयर इट डज एग्जिस्ट सो वी गॉट टू बी वेरी केयरफुल दीज आर द फ्यू इनिशिएटिव्स वी हैव बीन टेकिंग इन आवर एनजीओ ऑन आल्सो ऑन अ पर्सनल कैपेसिटी एंड आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट दैट वी मस्ट लेट आवर गार्ड्स अंडर गो दिस पॉश ट्रेनिंग एंड द बिहेवियरल ट्रेनिंग सी पहला काम हम पॉश ट्रेनिंग में सिर्फ गार्ड को ये बताते हैं दैट यू शुड फील प्राउड दैट यू आर अ सिक्योरिटी गार्ड उनको शर्म आती है मैडम हम ना सिक्योरिटी गार्ड है आई टेल देम दैट यू आर अ सिक्योरिटी यू नो यू शुड फील दैट प्राइड सो आई ओनली टीच देम टू थिंग वंस बीइंग अ प्राइड हैविंग अ प्राइड एंड प्राउड पर्सनल दैट यू आर सिक्योरिटी सेकंड थिंग टू कीप योर बॉडी लैंग्वेज इन अ वेरी वेरी इन अप्रोप्रिएट मैनर ताकि जो लेडी कॉन्ट्रैक्टर और लेडी वॉकिंग इन टू हैं या आ रही हैं उनको गलत मैसेज ना जाए सो एंड एक और मैं आपको चीज बताऊँगी शॉप फ्लोर नाउ देर इज अनदर क्लाइंट वहाँ पे गार्ड की जो प्रॉब्लम है वो बोलते हैं जब शॉप फ्लोर पे हम जाते हैं वेन वी टेल दी लेडी की नाउ ऑफिस आवर्स आर फिनिश्ड एंड शी इज वर्किंग येट ऑन द कंप्यूटर हाउ डू वी एड्रेस दैट बिकॉज ही हैज अ जॉब टू डू एंड द लेडी प्रॉब्लम कीप सेंग दो मिनट दो मिनट दो मिनट एंड देन ही हैज अ प्रेशर 
now how to address that so what we teach gary we teach only how to say and address in a very polite manner be firm have a very positive body language yet pass on the message so these are the only thing i can we can change the human to behave with another human 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 because hum end of the day aadmi ko hi bech rahe hain to aadmi ko jab hum bechte hain what makes a difference training so thank you very much uh, ospas and the video really word for bringing up this such a great topic the training is must and that makes us different than one guarding company to another guarding company thank you very much thank you veena thanks very relevant and uh, at the same time i i wish we could have taken some question because we have huge amount of knowledge within the audience as well or maybe ask the panel more discussion but i think i'm i'm taking away a lot of things with myself with your comments i think how effective the training has to be transformation the benefits of it but if i try to summarize this great panel i can say that you take one risk of not training you would have welcomed every possible risk to you so that's the importance is told so ladies and gentlemen please give a big round for the panel thank you so much for the comments and thank you once again to the organizers for giving us opportunity to speak here thank you